welcome back to What Are Tea Noobs with Channel Disturbance. This is a 105 Lef H 18B2, the French tier 5 premium SPG that we've come to know and love as Fifi Love Pew Pew, but most people know it as a Leffy or a Leaf Blower. This one's on the north, north spawn of Serene Coast, and it's under the command of Provo Bob. Now, Provo Bob's an Aussie, and that's why there's a kangaroo on the side of his Fifi. A lot of people are playing the Fifi at the moment, mainly because the North American server actually put it on sale and they're getting some experience with this vehicle. But Provo Bob's actually on the Australian server. Yes, uh, there's a specific server in Australia for the Aussies and the Kiwis because of the long distance between them and the Hong Kong server, which means you get lag. And uh, so Wargaming created a server specifically for the Australians and the Kiwis, but because there's a shortage of players they have to put a number of bots in the game and in this game it's no exception, there's only six real players in the game, the rest are bots and so what I'm going to do is just include the names up in the uh, scoreboard there right at the top so you can see which ones are bots and which ones are not. Well, the bots are the ones with semicolons in front of their names. And so that Chi Nu that you can see rushing through the screen right now, he's a bot. And that M7, that's also a bot. He's dialing in. Now, he did the right thing. He aimed ahead of his path, but the bot changed course. Almost miraculously, you might say. He fires another one, but that's a bit behind the M7. Okay. Okay, both of the other tanks there in sight, the Lux and the M4, uh, and the M7 rather, are both bots. No, that's off to one side. He's just getting his eye in at the moment. Thankfully, now Wargame has actually given the Fifi more shells to play with, and it does help a great deal because before. You were rather limited with only 42 rounds, but now you've got quite a few more, and that does make a difference. Once he's got his eye in, he should be able to get direct hits on these guys. Over out the peninsula, an enemy heavy has been spotted. It's a Type 95. This is a Tier 5 battle with Tier 4 tanks in it, so he's facing some opposition which he can easily kill given the right circumstances he's dining in on that looks who's stationary fires around in oh and that shell went well long he's not getting the accuracy you normally get from this arty and it looks like the looks has moved because that shell did no damage whatsoever even though it was bang on target Prevo Bob's running premium consumables, which is coffee and croissant, because it does drastically improve the performance of the RT. He's got a reload time of just under 8 seconds a shot, and it will dial in almost as quickly as it reloads, but that shot was not in the path of the M7, and as consequently, it's another miss. He's having a bit of difficulty trying to get these ones on target. Okay, the M7's been tracked, but he fixes the track, moves forward... There's that looks again. Keeps rocking backwards and forwards. He fires one in and he's got his first kill. Quite a big one as well. 394 hit points of that one. He must have penetrated the looks. This 105mm light field howitzer has got the ability to do 410 alpha and it'll penetrate 53 millimeters of armor. And the looks doesn't really have that much in the way of protection. So that's why the shell penetrated and did a, a very, well, it was a low roll, but it's all the hit points he had left. Burst radius of 1.91 meters, which means you can get a near miss and you can still damage the enemy. But one of the best things about the Fifi is the fact that it can carry premium rounds. Premium rounds like heat or armor piercing. And although you have to get a direct hit to make those work, if you do get a direct hit, they can be pretty devastating to the enemy. Because after all, it's 105mm calibre. And at this tier, that means you would be doing damage in the region of 350 hit points. Now that was a penetrating shot on the DW2. And a high roll at that. But he didn't kill it. 
Still 46 hit points, and that goes to the M8A1. Okay, we're looking at that Type 95. It's a bot. He fires around in, and yes, he gets his next kill. So that's two. Got a Chin Nu in the dip on the west side of the map. No, that wasn't fully dialed in. It really does help to let the Fifi dial in on the target. And, well, that Chinu is in the cover of that rock at the moment. There's a T-28 at the back. Yes, he spotted that. He's stationary, hiding in a tree. Let it dial in. It's gone closer to get a better look when he hits it. Rounds out. This all should strike it. Yes, it does. And he's got another kill. The T28, by the way, was a real player. Chinu, it's another bot. Bots aren't that easy to kill. He did get that one. But he's been trying to kill that Chinu for a little while now. So he's got four kills now. KV1, that's a real player. No semicolons in front of the name. Gets a direct hit on him for 45 hit points. Lines him up, puts another one in. And it's another good hit. 14 hit points only though. We need the Panzer 38 NA to spot for us. No, he's moved. Let it dial in. Work out where they're going. Rounds out, looks good. Just misses. Hits, damages the tracks. Fires that one, it looks good. And he does get a hit for 26. You might say he's focusing on this KV-1 at the moment, but he's blocking our guys from going further south. And another hit. I think he's tracked this time. Pretty sure he is tracked. Oh, but he fixes the tracks and moves forward. He's trying to get onto the cover of that rock. Rounds out. And another big hit this time. 126. You can see where all the shells have been hitting on the vehicle. Those yellow marks, that's where the rounds have been going in. It's got one on the front, one on the turret, one on the engine deck. Rounds out. It's going to miss. Yep. Okay, he's switching targets now because the gorilla was seen in the woods. Stationary at that spot. Fires around in on there. Nope, doesn't get anything. He's only got 11 rounds left now, so he's running short of ammunition. I think we just saw a tracer coming out, but we didn't see the RT. I think now he's actually been distracted by other things which he shouldn't be distracted by. He's now going for that M7. Unfortunately, our guys are now still held up by the KV-1 and the M7. The M7 is now stationary. Rounds out. This should hit. It did, and he got the kill. Wolverine, M10. On the west side of the map, making his way up. He's, he's a real player, that one. That's why he's moving very unpredictably. Meanwhile, our Chinu Kai down there is a bot. That's why he's driving in, in a also very erratic manner. But he has spotted that Wolverine. Now, Provo Bob's dialing in. Fires a bit too prematurely, but he still gets a hit. And that's his top gun. Now, the enemy artist's been spotted again. He's gone straight to it this time using our technique of right-hand mouse button. Right-hand control button, rather. Uh, and then putting his cursor over the minimap and clicking on the right hand button and he gets a kill on the gorilla that means he's got seven kills now but he's running desperately short of ammunition he's only got five shots left now and he fires where he thinks the stug is but the stug's moved he fires in around ahead of the track of the stug but the stug's moving too quickly he's now only got three rounds left he needs to be very careful what he shoots at Two rounds left now. He's going to run out of ammo. 
before the enemy's killed. There's only three enemies remaining. The trouble is, although he does have still have some human players on his team, he is running so short of ammunition, he may be relegated to just having to move to the enemy cap area, just a cap, to try and win the game. Although he can spot at over 390 meters, so he may want to actually move into a position where he can spot for his team. But I think he's now accepted that that Stug 4 is headed towards him. And that Stug 4 is under the control of a human player. It is, after all, a reward tank for completing the personal missions. So that guy knows what he's doing and he's lining up a shot on this guy now to get an accurate shot. He's been spotted, yes. Gets a hit for 183, but the Stug's probably going to be using his 75mm gun on Provo Bob very shortly and he uses his last shell and doesn't get anything off that and now he's got nothing left all he can do is ram this Stug and well I'm afraid well he's, he's trying to beat a retreat but I think it's too late now the Stug will have him Yes, he fired off far too many rounds willy-nilly at the enemy and just wasted that ammunition. Wasn't fully dialed in. And he's trying to get away from the Stug, but he won't, I'm afraid, because the Stug will outpace him. I'm afraid the Fifi is a very slow tank. It's based on the Char B1. And that player, a human player, will chase him until he catches up with him and shoots him and kills him. His gun's up, but it's inevitable. It's going to happen. He's been hit. And it's been hit in the engine. The Stug rams him, and that's it. It's all over. Oh, dear. And there's only two left on his team now against three enemies. They've managed to kill all of the others. And the two left on his team, well, they're live players, real players. There's a Matilda and a Panzer 38 NA. The Matilda is just the other side of the cap area. We can see here that he's slowly being destroyed by the Stug. I think he's just given up. Yeah. And the Panzer 38 NA, well, he's down there and he's got very low hit points. Only 10% left. So I don't think he will survive very long either. The Stug 4 is now capping. The KV-1's finally spotted the Panzer 38 NA. And killed him. And that's it. It's all over. So I'm afraid too many rounds were fired. Where they should not have been fired until he was fully dialed in on the target. And he wasn't getting much luck hitting the enemy in this game. But he did get some medals. Let's have a look at the end of battle results. Well, first class tanker for Provo Bob in the 105 FH 18B2. He got a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits in this one. He managed to get 20. And he got a high caliber for dealing the most damage in the game. And a top gun for getting at least six kills. He got seven in the end. But uh, his win eight was 9,094, which is super unicum standard. But I'm afraid, yes, he was killed by the enemy and they lost the game. We look at the team score, we can see he did do the highest damage, 2,542 hit points. But if all your teammates are wiped out, it doesn't do you any good. And I'm afraid if you do fire all your shells and don't get damage for it, then yes, that can be equally um, a reason why you actually lost this game. The He did 1,009, well, the KV-1 on the enemy team did 1,903 hit points, the second highest scorer, and the Stug managed to get 1,795, and he was the third highest. Their Wolverine actually got a tank sniper as well for 1,600 hit points. When it came to kills, it was Provo Bobby got seven kills in the game, four kills for the KV-1 and the Stug 4, and the Wolverine also picked up three. When it came to base XP, it's the Stug 4 with 1,162 861 went to the KV-1, 524 went to the Wolverine, 
uh, after Provo Bob, who got 656. So he's actually the third best on base XP. But as you can see, a large number of both teams was actually populated by bots. And of course, they don't get their statistics recorded. We look at detail. We can see that he fired all 50 rounds in his ammunition. Yep, he used to have 42. They gave us eight more shells, but I'm afraid Bob did not use those shells wisely in this game. As a consequence, he only got 16 direct hits and seven penetrations. 16 splash. Damage of 2,542 hit points, of which 2,333 were at more than 300 meters. He received three hits. All three were penetrations, all three from that Stug 4. He also damaged 10 of the enemy, killed 7, and on a premium count he earned 46,746 credits, got 6,075 for Courageous Resistance, that's for getting an Epic or Battle Hero medal in a losing or drawn game, and his total came to 52,821 credits. And after repair and ammunition resupply and consumables, because remember he did run food, he actually ended up with a profit of 25,350 credits. He also got 984 XP, 559 for Courageous Resistance, 618 for this being a premium vehicle, one of only two premium RTs in the game. Wargaming, why aren't you bringing out more? You should have brought out a whole fleet of premium RT by now, but I know those players would act like children and throw their toys out of the pram if you brought them into the game. That's a complete load of nonsense. Of course, they would buy them as well as we would. 2,161 experience points altogether. So, sadly, I'm afraid in this one, I'd, I'd put it down to the fact that not only was Provo Bob's teammates not up to the task, but the bots were acting very, very strangely because they were avoiding shots. But also, he wasn't fully dialing in on some of his targets before he was shooting, and that's why his shots were going wild. And I would say he needs to have a little more patience. Let the thing dial in before you shoot. And then obviously you'll get better results. But at least he got a couple of Battle Hero medals out of this one. If you enjoyed this replay, please give this video a like and do subscribe to our channel. And thanks for watching.